this is what we're going to be installing. We ended up picking up a new set of uh, IKEA Formula inner tie rods. The reason we went with these is I wanted something that we could trust on her car, something that we know won't break. And uh, it's pretty adjustable. Like it can adjust an inch shorter to an inch longer than the factory S14 inner tie rod. And uh, we got new new tie rod boots, and we got Circuit Sports OE style uh, outer tie rod ends. And um, also we're going to be installing this 7mm uh, rack spacer. That should give us a little more angle for steering. And that one, when you go to install it, basically goes in here. You can install it on your factory tie rod as well, but just make sure you have enough thread sticking out to engage in the, in the rack. But basically it slides on there. This one has a little bit of corrosion on it. Right there. It basically goes like that. And you just put a little bit of thread locker on there and you're good to go. But as you can see the difference on here. The S13 tie rod is a 12 millimeter diameter. The S14 tie rod is a 14 millimeter diameter. So it's much beefier, which these are prone to bend. These ones won't. And um, comparison to the outer tie rod ends, circuit sports, pretty big difference between the two. Alright, uh, once you break this uh, 19 millimeter nut free, don't remove it completely. Uh, there's two ways to go about breaking the taper here. Um, you can take two hammers have one on one side, hold it steady on there and take another and give it a swift blow to the to the knuckle part and it should dis distort the the taper enough to drop the tie rod. But what I have here is a, a Pitman arm puller and it makes the job pretty easily. But if you're going to use one of these I suggest keeping the nut on just so that the tie rod doesn't drop violently. Now you're going to have to fold these uh, tabs back. There's four of them. There's four edges on this uh, inner tie rod. So you're going to have to bend them back with a hammer and a chisel. And once you do that, you're able to grab the tie rod and spin it off of the rack. Alright, as you can see now, all four tabs are bent back. Now you're able to uh, remove the inner tie rod. Now you're going to remove uh, the, the tie rod boot. As you can see this one's pretty much destroyed so we're going to be replacing them today. And it's held on, if it's factory it's held on by this uh, wire tie. Basically all you got to do is just um, weaken it and break it off. And this boot should just pop right off. And now with the, the rack steered in with this uh, long end of the, the rack, it's about say about two inches sticking out of the rack you want to have as much in there so when you go to loosen the the inner tie rod it won't it won't bend or flex the the shaft so uh, an easy way to remove it basically this comes off this is the driver's side it comes off uh, counterclockwise like it would normally and what I'm doing here I'm using an adjustable wrench grabbing onto the inner tie rod and I'm using a jack to push up and do all the hard work for me so when you go ahead and lift up on it you should loosen it up free. Because these are all pretty tight if they're the original tie rods. And you can go ahead and remove this. Alright, now that we put uh, the Circuit Sports tie rod end onto the Akira Formula inner, I'm going to show you uh, basically how to put on the tie rod boot. It's so, like when you get a new inner and outer tie rod, they're going to come disassembled. So with this inner separated from the outer, just go ahead and slide it over all the way down to the bottom. It should seat right here in this little flat notch right in here and same with the IKEA tie rods right in here but to put it on this type of tie rod you have to disassemble it and then slide it on now nah, you're pretty much going to destroy the boot trying to put it on and um, go ahead and reinstall the nut and then uh, reassemble the tie rod
continue to pull this back. Until it's up in that seat right there. And it's properly secured. And just tighten up all the jam nuts. And uh, also when you go to reassemble it, try to keep it the same as the stock length as the original army took off. That way your alignment will be pretty close to where it needs to be, but I would still recommend taking it to an alignment shop and get it redone. If you're gonna be installing the spacers, you can go ahead and uh, slip these on for now. Alright, I'm gonna give you a brief explanation of what these spacers actually do. It's a common misconception where people think that it extends the length of the tie rod and that's where the benefit is. That's, tr that's half true, but basically what it does, it gives the, the rack more travel the, the shaft more travel to go into the rack when you when this wheel gets pulled in so the this tie rod gets pulled in seven millimeters more than it would factory giving you more angle allowing to push the other side of the tie rod out seven millimeters further thus giving you more angle in the, as a result so uh, these are pretty pretty cool cheap mod to get slight more angle they have different sizes I think it ranges from five six and seven millimeter but basically you just want to make sure you have enough thread engagement to uh, safely put them on. Mm -hmm. Alright, now with the uh, inner tie rod tightened up uh, to the shaft on the steering rack, go ahead and slide the boot over and you're going to secure it to the steering rack and tie rod. It may be a little tricky to get the the boot onto the, the rack, but just take your time and kind of work it around. Alright, now with the boot secured and with the zip ties that came with it, uh, you can go ahead and uh, hook up the outer tie rod into the knuckle. And using the, the nuts that came with it, go ahead and tighten it down. Alright, and then go ahead and reinstall the cotter pin. Bend up one of the tabs. And that's pretty much it.